2010 is here, but is it really a new dawn for financial sectors across the world? Many governments are still licking their wounds after the financial crisis left them in deep water. Here in oil-rich Nigeria, the government found themselves having to dig deeper into their pockets when oil prices plummeted to below $60 per barrel. After a poor implementation record of the 2009 budget, the government presented a 4.07 trillion naira financial plan for 2010. But in a country desperately in need of growth, many question the fact that recurrent expenditure gulped 50% of total spending, while capital expenditure grabbed only 33.5%. What we think is a bit optimistic, given the fact of the level of implementation of budgets uh, in the past historically is below 50%. I, I believe this year they are just at around 40% altogether at the federal level. Um, it obviously assumes that the amnesty program would survive um, because you know, prior to the amnesty program coming on board, we were down at about 1.3, 1.4 million barrels per day. Um, it also is suggesting a GDP growth rate of 6.1%. We think that's also quite ambitious, uh, given that two key elements of 2009, which we thought the president would do, did not happen. Um, we had ex expected in 2009 that they would have made a lot of progress in deregulating the oil sector. They didn't do that. We had also expected that they would do a lot towards uh, um, f fixing the electoral problems in Nigeria. Though the infrastructural bottlenecks are no different, the outlook seems brighter here in Lagos after the governor tabled a 429.6 billion naira budget focusing on rebuilding and upgrading its infrastructure, sourcing funds from its public and private partnerships, and aggressive revenue generation strategies, such as a 275 billion naira bond and tougher tax collection strategies. But it is still a nail-biting way to see what happens this year, especially after major private sector players like banks and financial services are still on a rocky path after losing millions in the financial downturn. Also, industry reforms enforced by the Central Bank of Nigeria has left them prudent about their spending and lending habits. These resulted in a general lack of liquidity and very few financial products such as mortgage credit and insurance offered to customers. Now, coming out of that, that means that many banks have written down capital market loans, particularly among those they lend to stockbrokers or capital market operators, they've written down reading them down to the value of the assets in the market. This paves the way for the asset management company, which is CBN, is now pushing through the National Assembly to come in and offer to buy these assets from the banks and give them liquidity. This has had an impact on golden sectors such as the real estate and property market in Lagos, making it difficult for developers and potential homeowners to access financing. The real estate market has uh, been pretty hard hit this year with the credit crunch, uh, with Nigeria going into a recession and feeling the impact of that. Um, you've seen credit agreements and, and loans being withdrawn on projects, projects being put on hold. Um, companies that have predicted that they were going to be investing in, in certain developments have withdrawn from that. You've seen a, a steady but slow decline in real estate prices, um, where of course you've had distressed sellers you know, they've been more eager to um, reduce the price of the asset, but there hasn't been a significant drop in real estate prices, as most people are suggesting. But even then, analysts still predict growth in this sector, mainly because rental returns and a good track record for appreciation in property continues to make it a hotspot for investors. I think that um, once we have a settling in the banking sector, and um, once you see uh, a bit more confidence, um, you will see that, I guess, towards the end of the second quarter, you will see a lot more investment in real estate. You'll see projects that were put on hold uh, starting to come online again. Um, and you, you will see that the market will start to pick up. But 2010 could see these overinflated property prices resulting in a situation similar to Dubai, where property owners found themselves seriously in debt. Um, the challenge Dubai had is that it had land and money, or well, borrowed money, but no people. So it needed to make it particularly attractive to attract people to come to it. Now Nigeria has less of a challenge from the point of view that there is already a density of people here. 
the population were 150 million people and an internal uh, capacity that's quite strong and could really be strengthened if we really focus on the apps, uh, appropriate economic development programs. Lagos population size has also seen it become a hub of ICT in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Already Nigeria has overtaken South Africa as the largest mobile market in the continent and Lagos is at the heart of this growth with telecom operators in the country seeing their gross subscriber base more than double their numbers in the past year. With these numbers, this sector is well on its way for the new year. But the challenge is introducing the licensing and building of 3G technologies, which will include installing fiber optic cables and satellites and finding the necessary power to run them. Um, I think that operators are going to have to think new ways of doing business. We are definitely going to move from the historical dependence on voice and begin to develop more data offerings and other offerings to excite our subscribers. 2010 is going to be very exciting for data. Um, there's a lot of bandwidth coming to Nigeria. Uh, we expect that at least three new cables would be ready for service, touch wood, in 2010 and this will translate into immense capacity for Nigeria. It will enable the broadband revolution actually take off. We will be developing our 3G infrastructure. We will begin to even look beyond 3G and begin to look at long-term evolution. We will begin, we will be looking at different standards to deliver our data applications in a cost-effective manner. Lagos' hospitality sector also faces similar challenges as the telecom sector. Lagos is a prime spot for business tourism. But though the numbers look good now, its tourism sector may need to evolve in 2010 in order to remain afloat. Though recent taxes introduced by the state government may not be adding to their balance sheets, business tourism may take a hit as a result of the financial downturn. Therefore, they have to spend more on improving leisure tourism in order to boost their numbers. We've seen a, a bit of um, uh, decrease in demand, although not as big as experience as the one experienced in other economies. Demand is likely to grow slightly in 2010. Um, we estimate to have a growth of about 3 to 4 percent for, for next year in the city of Lagos. Um, and that's merely because of economic growth in other sectors of the economy, namely oil industry, telecoms, um, and eventually the banking sector. In 2010, we have already taken quite a large number of bookings for next year, so we know that there's a lot of interest from investors outside Nigeria to come and do business here. But the success of all these sectors in 2010 boils down to consumer spending. Last year, many businesses already saw their sales decreasing as people spent less and less on electronics and cars. As everywhere in the world, the uh, crisis hit practically everybody, and especially the automotive industry, driven by the financial crisis, turned also into, I wouldn't say a disaster, but in a kind of very, very uh, challenging uh, uh, issue. And of course, also the brand Mercedes-Benz had to suffer a lot. So it made us think about, okay, what can we do in these challenging times? Yeah, because just to be frustrated and say, okay, we have challenges to face, we are losing market here, this is not the way it works. So we decided, okay, we need to focus on our customers. What does it mean? Customer satisfaction has to rise. We invested heavily across the country into workshops, into new sales outlets. We focused very strong on professionalization of our sales and after sales workforce. It's our belief that in 2010, we focus strongly on the quality, yeah, on the qualitative aspect of the business, and on long term, yeah, the sales will definitely arise again in number.